thank you for our leaders development meeting we're asking oh lord that tonight you speak to every heart in jesus name we pray you strengthen us enlighten us anoint your people for greater exploits in jesus name we pray that these things we're learning will not be in vain but every one of us will grow in our understanding of leadership in our effectiveness in leadership and we pray this work will prosper in our hands together Amen. confirm your word in every life tonight in jesus name we pray again again once again another amen. amen god bless you real good we're looking at first samuel chapter 16 and i'm reading from verse 13 for Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Raman. That's the first anointing that David had. Welcome to 2 Samuel chapter 2 second samuel chapter 2 we're looking at verse 4 and the men of judah came and there they anointed david king over the house of judah and he told david saying that the men of jabesh gilead were they that buried saul that's the second anointing that uh, came upon david we're coming to second samuel chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 3 so all the elders of israel came to the king to hebron and king david made a league with them in hebron before the lord and they anointed david king tell me over israel so you'll see three times that he was anointed number one within the family number two for judah number three for the whole of israel number one it was private number two it was limited number three it was now a global national anointing and tonight we're looking at the importance of that anointing that came upon David. The Lord had chosen him. And the Lord himself had ordered the anointing in the first place. Even though Samuel did it. Even though the people of Judah did it. Second time. Even though the people of Israel anointed him king. That's the third time. It was actual anointing coming from God. We're looking at Psalm 89. As we look at Psalm 89 verse 20. It says, I have anointed David, my servant, with my holy oil, have I anointed him. So you understand, although God may use a prophet like Samuel, he may use the people of Judah, he may use the people of Israel, ultimately it's the Lord himself that anointed him to be king over his people, over Israel. But what does the anointing do? And how do we have the anointing? What's the result of that anointing in our lives? I'm talking to you tonight on the anointing and the boldness of the righteous. The anointing and the boldness of the righteous. If you come back to Second Samuel chapter 5. And then we're reading once again from verse 3. You'll see that when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed over the people of Israel. You see their response. You see their reaction. And then you see the reality. Again, the same thing with us today. When the anointing comes upon you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and then the challenges that come, the opposition that comes, how do you face that? What do you do about that? We're coming to Second Samuel chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 3. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron. And the, and the king David made a league, an agreement with them, a compact with them, a covenant with them in Hebron. 
before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. Then he goes on to give us the details about how well he was when he was anointed over Israel. Come to verse 17. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hold. And the Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of, Re of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? To then to bear perism. And David smote them there and said, The Lord has broken forth upon mine enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore, he called the name of that place Bear Perism. The point is this, that as you look at the anointed David, and as you look at the time of the anointing, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, you'll find he was anointed. The very next chapter talks about Goliath, talks about the opposition, talks about the fight. David was appointed and anointed by God for a particular purpose. And then the enemies were going to oppose that purpose. They were going to fight against that purpose. You realize that in your life. When God has appointed you for something, anointed you for something, and sent you for something, the Philistines may not be far away. Opposition may not be far away. And then what do you do? You look at David. When he came in chapter 17 of 1 Samuel, he said, Let nobody be afraid because of this Goliath. The Lord who helped me over the lion and over the bear, he will help me. And this uncircumcised Philistine, he'll be defeated. And your enemies will be defeated. And those who try to oppose you, we're talking about agents of Satan, we're not talking about believers, we're talking about uh, those who are enemies of righteousness, enemies of the ministry, your ministry. We know that as you face the Goliath of the day, you are going to be the overcomer. But look at what we can tell about uh, David. We're looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. But, tell me, tell me out loud. Tell me as if you believe that. Say it as if it's going to happen to you. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. The righteous as bold as a lion. As we think about David, we're thinking about ourselves too. We're thinking about the choice God has made. We're thinking about the appointment God has made. And we're thinking about the anointing he has given us. Think about David to start with. David was appointed and anointed for a purpose. What purpose? Number one, to do and to fulfill God's will. To do and to fulfill God's will. I found David, a man at a man's own heart, who shall fulfill all my will. Why was he appointed? Why was he anointed? Number two, to fight the battles of the Lord. To fight the battles of the Lord. That's exactly what Abigail said. He said, we know God has raised you up and you have been fighting effectively the battles of the Lord. Number three, to subdue the enemies of God's people. The enemies of God's people were still there in that land of promise, in that land of Canaan. And the enemies did not want them to enjoy all that God had given them. And God has restored David so that he will subdue the enemies of God's people. As you look at your ministry, as you look at your calling, what are you called to do? Number one is to do to fulfill the will of God. Number two, it is to fight the Lord's battle. There's a battle raging. And then 
then it's a battle for the gospel, a battle for the souls of men and women, snatching them out of the hands of the devil and bringing them into the kingdom. It's the battle against hell. You're depopulating hell and you're increasing the people that go to heaven. Number three, it is to subdue the enemies of the people of God so that our people are not running elder skelter. I have a problem. I have this challenge. I have this challenge. That's why you are there as a leader like David so that you will subdue by prayer, by preaching, by helping them to know what are the promises of God. You will subdue the enemies in Jesus' name. Of course, the Philistines were not just the enemies of Israel. They were the enemies of David himself. And any enemy that shows up against you, you have overcome already. Yeah. Number four, it was to rule God's people in righteousness. To lead God's people in righteousness. And to show God's people his righteousness. That's why we're leaders. It is to show the righteousness of God. It is to reveal the righteousness of God. It is to enforce the righteousness of God. It is to help people to understand that righteousness is the very essence and the center of the gospel proclamation. And you want to help people, God's people, in righteousness. Number five is to keep Israel from slavery and bondage. To keep Israel from bondage and from slavery. You'll see if you remember the, what we read in Judges. And they were delivered. Then they went back to slavery. Then they were delivered. They went back to slavery. But God raised up David. So that the victory of the people of God will be permanent. The triumph of the people of God will be permanent. And God has raised you up like he raised up David. So that the people of God, those people you lead and those people you teach and those people you are training, they'll maintain constant victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Number six is to prepare God's people for heaven and glory. God's people for heaven and glory. If you read the Psalms, you'll discover that David knew about the grace of God, about the glory of God, and about heaven. And he asked the question in Psalm 15, asked the question in Psalm 24, who will ascend to the hill of the Lord, who will stand in his holy place? Then he tells us the revelation from God, how we get to heaven. And so it was to help the people of God and prepare the people of God for heaven and for glory. Number seven to preserve the nation for the coming of the son of David. The Lord has said unto my Lord, sit down until I make your enemies that put you. Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 24, open the gate that the king of glory may come in. He was to prepare the people of God and preserve the people of God, the nation for the coming of the son of David, our Christ and our king. As soon as David was anointed a king, the Philistines rose to fight against the king and against the kingdom. And that man needed boldness. Look at chapter 17 of 1 Samuel. Everybody was afraid. Everybody was shaking in their boots. But then, even in the midst of that, I said, let nobody be afraid. I will go against the Philistine and I will overcome. Did he overcome? Just like you are going to overcome. Boldness was an essential necessity for him. And the same thing for the ministry today, for the minister today. Boldness is an essential uh, commodity, an essential characteristic, an essential necessity for you and I. And we're ready to read in Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 1. It says, the righteous are, tell me. As bold as a lion. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Now, what, what do you see about that lion? About the, the boldness. How do you describe the boldness of that lion? We're looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 30. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 30. You want to mark this in your Bible. You want to know the characteristics of the lion. You want to know all this essential necessity we find in the life of the lion and in the transfer to your life. Amen. Look at uh, I say this Proverbs chapter 30 verse 30. A lion which is strongest among beasts 
and turneth not away for any. That's the boldness right there. The lion, the strongest, the mightiest, the fiercest, among all the bees, among all the animals, and this characteristic, it turneth not away for any. If the righteous will realize that, that's the kind of boldness he wants us to have. If the righteous will realize, that's the kind of authority and the kind of confidence he wants us to have, that you are strong in your mind. You're strong in your decision. You're strong in your commitment. You're strong in your calling. And you do not turn aside or turn away for any problem and for any challenge and for any opposition. That's what you find about David. That man was a righteous man by the grace of God. And he turned not aside for anyone. If he listened there, he turned not aside. And all the challenges that came to him, he depended on prayer. He depended on the power of the Lord. He depended upon the promise of the Lord. And he turned not aside because of any challenge. You look at your life, where you could have been. Were it not for when you saw an obstacle, then you turned aside. When you experience opposition, then you turn aside. When the enemy assailed and raged, then you turn aside. Your heart became afraid. Your mind became afraid. You didn't claim the promise of the Lord that the righteous will be, must be as bold as a lion. And tonight, that boldness will come into your life. How do we get that done? How do we have the boldness of the lion? Let me read once again uh, those two verses in uh, the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, latter part of verse 1. But the righteous, but the righteous, I'm waiting for a giggy brethren, for the, but the righteous a bulge as a lion. That's all right. I live sure I know you are there too, Adikeja. All of us, the power of God will come upon your life in Jesus' name. The righteous as bold as a lion. And you know, to start with, you think about, am I righteous? Do I have the righteousness of Christ? Have I been forgiven? Am I born again? Am I living the life that Christ expects me to live? Am I redeemed of the Lord? Ransomed by the Lord? Purchased by the Lord? Am I part of the people of God? And can I say by the grace of God, He made me righteous? If your answer to that question is yes, then the next shall follow. The righteous are as bold as tell me. A lion. And in chapter 30, verse 30, a lion which is strongest among beasts and turneth not away for any. Turneth not away for any. You can just imagine a lion there and then a bear coming. That lion will stay there and say, come. I'll show you something. Or maybe it's a snake coming. Come. And I'm going to crush you completely. Or it's another, or, it, or it's a scorpion coming. It says, come. Because he turneth not away for any. If God can do this in your heart, and he will. If God can do this and give you backbone and give you confidence and give you assurance and give you power and give you the kind of boldness that God has called you and he says this is the way, walk in it, this is the word, preach that word and this is the ministry, it, it make sure you're effective in that ministry and then some things rise up against you and then you have that boldness of the lion and you turn not aside for anything and for anyone. It will happen. Amen. You're not afraid of small things. You're not afraid of big things. You're not afraid of regular hindrances. You're not afraid of peculiar hindrances. You're not afraid of any enemy, whoever they are, whatever they are swallowed, and whatever they might be projected. You say, here I stand. I'm going to do what the Lord has called me to do because I turn not aside for any. It's happening to you already. Amen. How do we have this? How do we have this boldness of the lion? I'm going to use the letters of the word lion. Tell me the first letter there. That's libration. Libration. Tell me the next letter after that. That's inheritance. I, inheritance. We belong to a family. 
a family that is headed by the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when you are born into that family, you inherit something from Christ because we're co heirs with Christ inheritance. Tell me the next letter. That's obligation, occupation, obligation, occupation, the same thing, you know, we have an obligation. We have the reason why we exist, we have the reason why he has put us here. And while we're in the path of duty, the thing that the Lord has commanded, the thing that the Lord has raised us up, nobody can stop us. From tonight, you are that unstoppable conqueror. And then the last uh, letter there. And uh, that's the nature, the nature. You see, when you come to Christ, it doesn't just forgive you. Yes, he forgives. It doesn't just save you. Yes, he saves us. He imparts his very nature unto us. And the nature of Christ is not the nature of cowardice. It's not the nature of fearfulness. It's not the nature of timidity. It's not the nature of vacillating. It's not the nature of indecision. It's the nature of firmness and the nature of authority and the nature of power and the nature of standing firm in the will of God and nobody will turn you around. Therefore, we're talking about this now the four subtitles. Number one, liberation through our royal reconciliation. Liberation through our royal reconciliation. He's the king and he has liberated us. And it is reconciliation that was done on a royal basis. Number two, our inheritance through regal redemption. Regal redemption. Our redemption was plunged upon the throne. On the throne of the universe. It's regal. It's royal. And it's giving us that redemption. And because of that redemption, we have an inheritance. I pray that you'll not miss your inheritance tonight. Number three, the obligation in our righteous responsibility. Righteous responsibility. is giving us a responsibility. And that responsibility is righteous. And it is a kind of responsibility that prepares a people to get into that holy heaven. Number four, the nature of our reigning redeemer. The nature of of our reigning redeemer. Tell me number one. Tell me unison number one. The liberation through royal reconciliation. You see when we reconcile with Christ, we come to Christ and then he imparts something you know, unto us. You see if you don't understand what you have, you don't know what has been imparted to you, you don't know what you really possess, you're not going to make use of that. Look at many of us, we all have two feet. We can walk, we can run, but many of us are not athletes. You know why? Those athletes, they don't have better fish than we have by practice and practice and practice. They develop the use of their feet. Many of us, you know, all of us, we have brain, good brain, you have good IQ. But you know, some people have gone to study engineering or history or geography or chemistry or whatever. You know why? And their brain is developed. And even when they are getting much older, that brain is changed a retentive memory, an intelligent man, an intelligent woman. You know why? Because they keep on developing that brain. They keep on reading. They keep on searching. And some of, you know, some of us, uh, you know, we have the same hearing. And uh, there are some people, if they speak uh, French, now you will not understand why. Because the people understand the French, they have been hearing and hearing and hearing. It is the development of what God has given us. He liberates us. He reconciles us with the Lord. And then what he gives us, we begin to use. You are not staying back. You are not laid back. You are not shying away from anything. What he has given you, you begin to use. And within the next one year, if Jesus tarries, because you will still be alive. You will not die. Yeah. Everything the Lord has committed to your hand, you will do. Yeah. Even if you have to start today and say, from today, this is where I'm going, you will get somewhere. Yeah. 
because of the liberation that comes through our royal, our royal reconciliation. Look at this in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 13. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, remember, remember, the righteous are as, tell me, bold as a lion when they saw the boldness of peter and john and perceived that they had been or that they were learned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge of them that tell me the rest they had been with jesus with jesus reconciliation you know peter denied the lord but now he's forgiven now he's reconciled now he's associated affiliated with christ and the people could see as a result of reconciliation with christ as a result of forgiveness from christ as a result of that intimacy with christ boldness came to him it comes and it is coming upon you that you'll be able to stand because of that reconciliation with Christ. You say, he's in me, I'm in him, he'll never leave me, and I will never leave him. Because of that, you are liberated from fear. You are liberated from timidity. You are liberated from panicking. You are liberated from any of the other animals coming. You are the lion at this time. And you stand there, and somebody, is something is coming from there. You say, come. Because now I have the lion of the tribe of Judah living on the inside of me. You will overcome. Amen. In Romans chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 8. Romans chapter 5, we're looking at it from verse 8. What the Lord has done, the forgiveness he has given us, the salvation he has given us, the reconciliation he has given us already. Romans chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 8. It says in verse 8, But God commendeth his love toward us. I'm going to make it personal. But God commended his love towards me. You know, if you are the only sinner in the world that needs to be forgiven, Jesus would still have died for you. You're so important before the Lord. Your soul is so essential before the Lord. And for God commended his love towards me in that where, while I was yet a sinner, tell me, Christ died, Christ died for me. Christ died for me. And that's not in vain. It will happen to you. Amen. It has happened to you already. Amen. And you will enjoy the benefit of that reconciliation in Jesus' name. Much more than, much more than, much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him we're going to make it personal being then justified by his blood i shall be saved from wrath through him you know sometimes so you read all these promises and you throw them to everybody and then you forget yourself when you make it personal you say praise the lord i'm on my way to heaven Praise the Lord, everything that stands in my way to hinder me from getting to heaven, I am redeemed, I am saved, I am rescued, and I'm going to overcome them in Jesus' name. Look at verse 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, much more, much more being, tell me, reconciled we shall be saved by his life you see he has reconciled us and because he has reconciled us that's what gives us liberation it sets us free you're free from guilt you're free from condemnation you're free from the power and the hold of sin and you're free from the power of the enemy give me a good amen there now in second uh, second corinthians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 18 look at this and all things of god who has reconciled us to himself by jesus christ it says he has reconciled us to himself that means now you're sitting close to the lord himself you're having good relationship with the Lord himself because of the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. Because he has washed you. He says he has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and he has given us, tell me, 
the ministry of reconciliation. That's what he has given you. And you are going to succeed in that ministry. To which that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. You are not fearing that you know judgment will come because you are reconciled. It's not imputing your trespass unto you. Your mistakes of the past. Your shortcoming of the past. Your failure of the past. Even your backsliding of the past. And your terrible sins of the past. Thank God they are all forgiven. And thank God they are all taken away. And it says it's not imputing our trespasses unto us. And has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. He has chosen us to the ministry. He has chosen us to do something that no other person can take away from us. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Tell me. Be ye reconciled unto God. Be ye reconciled unto God. With that reconciliation, thank God, we are liberated. Liberated from sin. Liberated from slavery. We are released from the cage and the captivity of Satan. We are no more under the terror, under the power, under the influence, and under, under the yoke of Satan anymore. And we are now the righteous people who are free and bold. Reconciled with God, we are free from condemnation. We are free from the fear of judgment. We are free from the fear of damnation. Sin brings weakness. Sin brings fear. Sin brings condemnation. But salvation brings reconciliation. I'm reconciled. Salvation brings peace. I have peace. Salvation brings joy. I have joy. Salvation brings confidence. Thank God I have confidence. Salvation brings assurance. Thank God I have assurance. Salvation brings righteousness. I have righteousness. And salvation brings boldness. And thank God you are bold. We're looking at point number two now. The, our inheritance through the regal redemption. Our inheritance. Our inheritance. Understand? As we look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're reading from verse 15. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For ye have, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Ye have not received the spirit of bondage to fear. Fear brings bondage. Even though Saul was king of Israel, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, he was so much afraid. Afraid of Goliath. Afraid of what God had appointed him to do. Not only that, in chapter 15, he was afraid of the people. Afraid of the people. Think about this. Afraid of the Philistines. Afraid of the Israelites. So, where are you going to stand? He had no place to stand. He had no feet to stand. He had no mind to stand. Because fear had paralyzed him, conquered him. Afraid of outsiders. Afraid of insiders. Thank God you're free. And he says, we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But we have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry Abba, Father, the Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Any child of God in the house today? Thank God you are. Thank God you are. It was all according to our faith in Jesus' name. Don't forget when the devil tries to stand before you. Remember, I'm a child of God. And when those paths of darkness, when they stand before you, don't forget, I'm a child of God. And when those feelings and challenges, when they come, you are a child of God. And at that time, the power of the Son of God will be manifested through you in Jesus' name. And look at this, verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. He says, we're heirs of Christ. 
You can only inherit what Christ, what he has. You cannot inherit sin from Christ. He doesn't have sin to give out. You cannot inherit sickness from Christ. He doesn't have sickness to give out. You cannot inherit sadness and sorrow and suffering. He doesn't have that to give you. You cannot inherit fear and timidity because he doesn't have that. But he has courage. You inherit that. He has boldness. You inherit that. He has power. You inherit that. You see, there are many people that have inherited things, but they are not making use of those things. You know, somebody has left a whole house for you, and the will is reaching, and it says that house is for so and so. But what if you don't go there? If you don't possess it, if you don't take ownership of it, although your name is there and you are supposed to inherit, but and no other people will be living there and they will usurp your authority. We are going to drive them out of your possession. Yeah. And you are going to have what belongs to you in Jesus' name. It says, we are co-heirs with Christ. Think about the things that belong to Christ. You should be a man of peace. Because peace, he is the prince of peace. We should have joy. He has joy at his birth. There was joy. We should have power. Because power belongs unto Christ. It says, all power is given unto me here in, in, on earth and also in heaven. If everything belongs to Christ and you are co-heirs with Christ, your problems are solved. Your harassment, everything is quenched. And you're going to have everything Christ has for you in Jesus' name. And look at Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 1. And then I'm going to go to verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. We're reading from verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 1. Who is as the wise man? And who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. Your face will shine. Amen. When you are cheerful from the inside, when you know what you have from the inside, when you say, praise the Lord, I have Christ, I have everything. Praise the Lord, I have Christ, I have the conqueror. Praise the Lord, I have Christ, I have the overcomer. Praise the Lord, I have Christ, I have the one that will subdue every enemy. They come in the night to subdue them. They come in the day, you subdue them. It says, a man's wisdom and interpretation will make his face to shine and the boldness of his face shall be changed. That is, if you were gloomy before, you were sorrowful before, you were downcast before, now you begin to think about what you have in Christ. You begin to think about the possession you have in Christ, even your facial appearance will change. Look at verse 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Look up here. Jesus is the king. Tell me, tell me. Jesus is the king of kings. Now, have you ever thought about that? What does that mean? Is he just the king of the idol worshipping chiefs? No, because it says, I know you not. All those who are still worshiping idols, this one is the chief, that one is the king, and all. It's not talking about that. King of kings, who are those kings? The people who are here, you are the kings. And then we have not taken our authority, we have not taken our stand, and we have not said, I am the king with a little k, he is the king with a capital K, and he is the king of of kings and because of that look at this little k here now where the word of a king is who is the king over here there is power you have power you have authority that's why we have boldness that's why we have assurance that's why we have the confidence that he has called us because he has called us we are the people that have that regal redemption and because of that regal redemption we have the inheritance acts of the apostles chapter 20 and i'm looking at verse 32 acts of the apostles chapter 20 and we're looking at verse 32 it says in verse 32 Acts of the Apostle 20, verse 32, and now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. The word of God will build you up. 
the things that want to destroy you, the word of God is more powerful than that. The things that want to crush you and make you like, you know, a nobody, like a non-entity. And those things are coming. You say, how can I withstand this? The word of God will build you up higher than all those things, greater than all those things, and stronger than all those things, you see, to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. Among them which are sanctified, inheritance. You will not miss your inheritance. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 26, Acts of the Apostles chapter 26, reading from verse 18, to open their eyes. Your eyes have been opened. And to turn them from darkness to light, you are in the light already. And from the power of Satan unto God, that power of Satan will never conquer you again. And then it says, and then it says, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and uh, inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. That me there is not Paul, it's Christ. Because Christ was talking to him. And it was Christ that said, the faith in me. That's the faith in Christ. Boldness is part of our inheritance. Courage is part of our inheritance. Confidence is part of our inheritance. Do you know that fearlessness is part of our inheritance? It belongs to Christ. Because Christ feared none. Christ feared nobody. And he says, because you come to me, you are a co-heir with me. You inherit with me. And so we inherit fearlessness from him in Jesus' name. Now, it's not by feeling. It's not by feeling, you know. If you have inherited, for example, somebody left for you in the bank, let a hundred thousand naira or let a million naira. And then you have the knowledge. It's the knowledge that matters. It's not the feeling. When you hear that somebody has left a million naira for you, you don't feel anything. You yes, you feel happy. And that's not what I mean is that you're not a feeling. It's not the feeling that makes the one million real. That one million is real. And you have more than one million. Because the inheritance that Christ has left you, you cannot even quantify or measure. And therefore, from today, you will live according to that inheritance in Jesus' name. Fearlessness is part of our inheritance. Faith is part of our inheritance. Assurance is part of our inheritance. Authority is part of our inheritance. And when you know your inheritance in Christ, you're getting through now liberation. That's for L. And then I, that's for inheritance, you are going to have it in Jesus' name. Actually, boldness is our right. It's a family right. Because we belong to the family, the family we belong to, we belong to, that determines our blood group. It determines our DNA. It determines everything about us because we belong to that family. And we belong to the family of the lion of the tribe of Judah. And because of that, it's your family right. Not only that, it's a redemptive right. Because he redeemed us and he said on the cross, it is finished. All your fears are finished. Yeah. Satan is conquered. Yeah. All those evil spirits are conquered. You're not fearing a curse coming from somewhere, coming upon you, impossible. Yeah. You are blessed already. That's what God told Balaam. He said, Balaam, don't waste your time. Don't go there. Don't go to say you are going to curse those people because they are blessed. If they were blessed in Abraham and you are blessed in Christ, there's no curse that can take hold of your life. It's a redemptive right. It's a promised right. Ask and it shall be given you. That's a promise. Seek and you shall find knock and it shall be open unto you. And it says everyone that asketh receiveth. It is a promised right. It's a blood bought purchased right. Blood bought purchased right. He purchased this freedom for you. This courage we are talking about and this stamina we are talking about and this confidence we are talking about, that's what he purchased for you. And because this is your purchase right, let all fears depart from your heart. And then it's a gospel Calvary right. Gospel Calvary right. It's a right that he has given to us by virtue of what he did on the cross of Calvary. Claim it. Keep it. Uh, keep it and manifest it. It is yours. It is mine. I said it is mine. I said it is mine. 
you'll never be the same again. Number three now is the obligation in our righteous responsibility. Obligation in our righteous responsibility. Our obligation or our occupation, the same thing, is preaching. We labor to preach. We exist to preach. We move around to preach. We're strong and healthy to preach. We labor to preach. We remain on earth only to preach. See. All the other things we're doing, they're to support the reason why we're here on earth. All the, you know, we go to the office, we get salary, all that, that's good, that's good. But that's to support the reason why we exist. We're not existing just to eat, we eat so we can preach. We're not existing just to sleep, we sleep so we can have refreshing. And then we recuperate. And because of that strength that comes now, we're able to go out and preach. And sometimes, you know, we have to rest. You know what we rest? We rest so we can preach. Everything we do on earth, the goal is that we are to preach the gospel. And if you think about that, then you understand. You eat every day, but you are not preaching sleep every day but we are not preaching i'm not seeing you in particular i know you are preaching are there preachers in the house i said are there preachers there i can't see them ah god bless you and your preaching will bear fruit in jesus name the reason why we remain here the reason why he has not taken us to heaven is so that we will preach and because that's the reason, that's why you need boldness. And that boldness will be multiplied, increase in your life in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 29. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, verse 29. It says, Now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. That's why we're here. That's why we exist. That's why we remain on earth. And that's why we labor. That's why we're still breathing. He says, give us boldness that we may by, with all boldness preach, speak thy word. Look at verse 31. And when they had prayed, like you are going to pray tonight. Amen. When they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God with boldness, with boldness, it will happen to you. Amen. Acts of the Apostles chapter 14, reading from verse 1. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. And they so speak, they speak and so speak, they preach and so preach, they proclaim and so proclaim that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. Do you know that multitudes are going to get saved through you? Yeah. Thousands are going to get saved through you. And then when you combine all our efforts together, millions are going to get saved through us in Jesus' name. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Verse 3, therefore they retreated and went away. Opposition came. Persecution came and people began to contradict them. We don't want trouble. We don't want any kind of opposition like this. We are men of peace. Sometimes some people translate their peace to timidity. And they translate it to fear. And then we pull back and allow the rest of the people to be in the hands of Satan. It will not happen here. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If they can fight for Satan, I will fight the good fight of faith. If they can make trouble and say, hey, Satan is a master, I'll not, you know, dodge them. I'll run away from that. I'll say, Jesus is my Lord. Satan will take you to hell, but my Jesus will take you to heaven. Let our people say, yeah. Amen. Look at this now. After the operation came, it says, Long time therefore abode they speaking, tell me, boldly in the Lord. 
they oppose you in the community. You cannot have church here. Of course, we're going to have church there. They say, over here, the idol worshippers are taking the, the place over. No, not at all. Not at all. Because the Lord has not given them any parcel of land to worship idol. But he has said, go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That land belongs to us. Those people belong to Christ. Christ died for them. And when opposition comes, long time therefore abode they, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. My brothers and sisters, if you sit at home, signs and wonders will not be happening. But it's when you go out into every local government and you are going. And you go to every village and every town. That's when signs and wonders will follow you. The, the year is not ended yet. Before the year runs out, those signs and wonders will show in your ministry in Jesus' name. We're looking at Acts 19. Acts of the Apostles chapter 19. I'm reading here from verse 8. Acts of the Apostles chapter 19. And we're looking at verse 8. It says in verse 8, And he went into the synagogue and spake. Tell me the next word. Boldly. You know, so that, that's what we we'll speak. You must always speak like that. Wherever you are, on the street, in the bus, at the train station, or you are in the village, or you are in the town, or anywhere you are, and you speak the word of God, it's the word of the king. Is the word is the final word. This is the word that will come before them on the final day. There's no other word as important as this. Therefore, you speak the word boldly. It says, and he went into the synagogue and speak boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Look at verse nine. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, it departed from them and separated the disciples disputing next word there tell me out loud disputing daily in the school of one tyrannos then it goes on in verse 10 and this continued somebody there will continue continue preaching continue praying continue evangelizing continue winning souls and this continued by the space of two years so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jew and Greeks. Look at verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. What if they just, uh, you know, retreated and they were laid back and then they were afraid and they went away. They went to hide themselves somewhere because of opposition. All those special miracles will not take place. And so that's why you clear the road before you. You will run. You will preach. All those places I say, don't come, don't come. That's exactly the place you are going. And if all of us in our thousands, you go here, you go there, you go everywhere, and you announce that Jesus Christ is Lord. Our brothers are there, our sisters are there, Papa is there, Mama is there, children, daughters, son. We're going everywhere and announcing that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and is the Savior, is the Redeemer. This nation will turn to the Lord. It will happen in our time in Jesus' name. We're here to serve our king. His kingdom is the only legitimate reason why we're still alive. Can we do other things every day? Go to the market every day and not preach every day? Can we be laboring for things that perish every day and not be preaching every day? Can we be as we're building things, sand and cement over here in the world uh, for every day and they not be preaching every day? Our obligation requires boldness. And the lion is naturally bold. Fear, weakness, timidity are foreign to the lion family. Once again, we're looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. And this is verse 30. I want to read it until it is registered in your heart. Reaching on your heart. And you know that this is who you are. It says, a lion which is the strongest among bees and turneth not away for any 
turneth not away for any. That's going to be translated into your life. L for liberation. I for inheritance. O for obligation. And now N, the nature, the nature of our reigning redeemer. In John chapter 7, look at the nature of Jesus Christ. John chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 25. John chapter 7, and we're reading from verse 25. It tells us in verse 25 and verse 26, Then some of them of Jerusalem said, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh how boldly they were planning to kill him. But all the same, he knew, he heard, he knew that that's what they were planning to do. But all the same, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? You see, when you are not running away from opposition, from problem, and then you say, I cannot preach over there, I cannot declare the word over there, because over there, that's a dangerous territory, that's this and that's that. But you have thousands of angels watching over you. And the Spirit of God has set a hedge around you. And there's a wall of fire around you. And nothing will hurt you as long as you remain in the path of duty in Jesus' name. And that's why those disciples, because they saw his nature, the nature of the lion. Because this is the lion of the tribe of Judah. They knew that if they were close to him, they were going to have this same thing coming upon them. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 29. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. They are threatening to, you know, kill us or do this and, and grant unto their servants that with all boldness they may speak the word by stretching forth thine hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed. Are you ready to pray? Yes. When they had prayed. I said, are you ready to pray? Yes. Holding on to the promise of God that, Lord, I need to be as bold as I ought to be. You have anointed me. You have appointed me. And then that anointing brings righteousness in my life. And the righteous are as bold as a lion. Our time has come. This is not the time for the church to stay in a corner somewhere. This is not the time for the church to be hiding somewhere behind any door. We're coming out. Open those gates, open those doors. We're coming out. As you see us, we go with the gospel of the Lord. And we go in the power of the Lord. You lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You cast out devils. You know sometimes so you, when you are casting out devils, because you don't know your inheritance and you don't know who you are, you are saying, Satan, evil spirit, I command you, in the name of Jesus, come out. While you are saying that with your mouth, inside your heart, you are saying, I hope he doesn't jump on me. I hope, uh, you know, this one, I saw a, a response. And then something say, what if you say it and nothing happens? And because you are thinking that you are saying another thing, you are contradicting yourself. But when your heart and your mouth, when they agree, when your mind and your utterance, when they agree, and you come and you know that the greater one lives on the inside of you. I'm talking to somebody there today. And you know that greater is he that is he that, he that is in the world. And you come and your mind, your mouth, they agree together. And you say, you devil and you demonic power there, I command you, tell me. They'll come out with that united force, a power here, power here, power there. And with united power, we all say, come out. That thing cannot stay there. You are going to see miracle in your ministry. Power in your ministry. You go up to the boldness of the righteous one. And then that power everywhere, all over this, in Lagos, in every district, everybody shout power. power. All the states in our nation, everybody shout power. power. All those villages and all the towns, everybody shout power. power. And then all over Africa and beyond Africa, deeper life is coming. Enemies get out of the way. 
deeper life is coming, demons get out of the way. And they are coming not like they say, we know deeper life. They have been coming, ah, this one is different. We are coming before some of us were are coming and looking up, but now we are coming and we are looking up. And we are looking at the eyes and the faces of the people. When they see us, that fire will spark out. And they know we are coming with the power and the authority of the lion. Because those who are washed in the blood of the lamb. Those who are cleansed by the blood of the lamb. And they have the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ in them. And they come with authority. Nothing will stand before you. And when they had prayed, they were, uh, they were assembled together. And it says, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost again. Receive that power again. Receive that anointing once again. And they speak, and they speak, and they speak the word of God with boldness. I will hear your testimony next week. I'll hear your testimony as we come again. You'll say, Pastor, it was true. I didn't know that thing will happen, but now I know it will happen. Candidate for power, where are you? Candidate for boldness, where are you? Candidate for authority, where are you? That has to go out. Anywhere you go, every sin of the devil will crumble before you. My sister, rise up. It is time to walk. My brother, rise up. It is time to seek the face of the Lord. The boldness of the lion coming in you because there's liberation and because there is inheritance and because there's obligation and because there's the nature, the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ is coming upon your life right now. The nature of the bird is to fly. And the nature of the fish is to swim. The nature of the lion is to be fearless and bold. And the nature of a preacher is to preach. Go and preach. Be bold and preach. Be bold and pray. Be bold and prevail. Be bold and pursue. Be bold and persevere. Be bold and possess the land. Be bold and purge the temple. Rise up, rise up and tell the Lord that boldness of the lion comes upon your life today. The righteous as bold as a lion.